Hello everyone, I'm Emma Kinlock and I'm delighted to be talking to you today on 28th of February 2023, Rare Disease Day. I'm one of the founders of Survivory Grand Cancer UK and I'm going to talk to you today about how we are meeting the unmet need for these rare cancers in the UK and beyond. So what exactly is rare about these cancers? Well, there's quite a few of them. There are over 23 types, but they represent less than half a percent of new cancer cases globally. Adenoid cystic carcinoma, or ACC, affects around five people per million per year in the UK. In addition to presenting in the major salivary glands in the head and neck area, they also present in other areas of the body in the minor salivary glands or secretory glands. These can include the lacrimal gland, the windpipe, the breast, and the vulva. Tumors usually grow slowly and are also unusual in that they grow along nerves. ACC, or adenoid cystic carcinoma, is persistent and pernicious. It likes to metastasize, and patients can live for many years with metastatic tumors that usually grow slowly, but always relentlessly increase in size and numbers. The patient wants to describe living with ACC as standing on a burning platform. In addition, there are many other challenges around these cancers. So first of all, getting a diagnosis. ACC is an equal opportunity cancer. It shows no bias. It is often asymptomatic. It has very few, well, if any, identified risk factors. It might not show up on scans because it's so, so slow growing and it looks different if it does show up on the scan. There, um, the no identified risk factors um, mean that people presenting at a younger, a younger age, which is often the case, um, have a particularly uh, difficult time getting diagnosed, as is the case with many rare diseases. Um, patients also face challenges finding clinicians who actually have heard of these cancers and know what to do with them. And even if they do know what to do with them, there are very, very few options. So um, treatments um, basically are surgery followed by radiotherapy where possible. Obviously, surgery is not always possible. The biology of these cancers is really poorly understood. So there are no targeted drug therapies available. Um, and for patients with incurable or metastatic disease, current chemotherapy treatments have really poor results. So there's no agreed standard treatments. There's a lot of inexperience in, in treating them. Um, and patients also can require ongoing monitoring for years. Living with and beyond these cancers is also therefore very challenging. Uh, sort of fear, anxiety, post-traumatic stress. And finally, the challenges around research. We all know low numbers of patients, we need tricky statistics, difficult trial designs, and we need international collaboration. Um, so we decided to try and do something about all of this. So um, I am a patient advocate, I'm actually a patient. Um, and in 2019, I uh, met uh, Dr. Robert Metcalf um, and we decided to work together um, to start a charity, the only charity worldwide focused um, specifically on salivary gland cancers. We see ourselves as this quite unique collaboration because of, I'm a patient advocate and he's a medical oncologist, and we just want to address the unmet needs for these cancers. We use co-production in everything that we do. Um, we collaborate um, between <coughs> patients and clinicians, um, uh, pa patients and carers, clinicians, researchers. We want to understand the biology of these cancers. We want to advance research, develop new treatments, please <laughs> provide some peer support and reliable information to people. Um, and we want to develop a network of people affected by and treating these cancers. So um, since 2019, um, I am delighted to tell you that we've achieved quite a lot of this. So collaboration, the action, the action of working with someone to produce something, and we have. So we hold, uh, we've now got nearly 400 um, people as part of our network, but mostly patients and carers, but we also have an increasing number of clinics. 
clinicians. We have regular patient and clinician gatherings, uh, normally every six months. They were originally in person and then they moved online and have a hybrid rather like um, many, <laughs> many events. Um, we always do deep dive um, into research and developments and any trials that are going on out there. Um, and we make little videos and podcasts of them so that you can watch them afterwards. They're on our website, our YouTube channel. We have expanded our network. So our network started really with ACC um, focused and 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 um and we've expanded since then to include all the other um slightly glands cancers. And that was a really important thing because otherwise they would just be um orphans like ACC was. And and we've um, collaborated uh, to produce uh, reliable information to patients. We've done the return to work guide, but we've also done um, we produced some genomics leaflets last year. Now, gene profiling and genomics is, it could, could potentially be huge for these cancers. Um, and, and there's a lot of, there's a lack of understanding about it also. Even though our leaflets um, are slightly very cancer focused, they also have a lot of generic information and they are uh, free to everybody to download from our website. We have also um, developed uh, the uh, UK referral hub um, for patients from all of the UK. He refers to Dr. Metcalf in the Christie in Manchester. He has a biobank, which is growing, which is great. Um, and he also opened a trial a couple of years ago, which is subsequently closed, hopefully the first of many. <laughs> Internationally, um, I recently worked on the ESMO guidelines for saliva gland cancers, and I've worked on the registry project with both members of um, the International Red Cancer Initiative. And we have presented a couple of posters um, at conferences, such as ESMO, which is the European Society of Medical Oncology. And then we have somebody who really helpfully does our social media, because it's not my forte. Um, and we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and that's really all I'm going to say, but the bottom line for me um, is that with a bit of hard work and a very strong desire to make a difference, you can. It takes time, commitment, and it's not always easy, but every tumour that is added to that via bank and every leaflet given to a clinician and every time I stand up or record a presentation and tell our story, we are moving one step closer to better outcomes for everyone affected by these rare cancers. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing. And just say thank you so much for listening. You know where I am if you have any questions or if I could ever do anything to help. And um, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.